I think back to high school, and I remember one lab that I did in which we generated hydrogen gas, and that was exciting. There was a flask that had some zinc in it, and there was a thistle tube that went down, and a tube that went across to this trough of water and some bottles, and we got it all set up and uh, poured the HCL down. I remember it very well, and the bubbles we collected, and we had all these, I think we collected five or six different glass bottles of hydrogen, put little glass plates over them. Maybe you remember a, a, dem, a lab like that when you were in high school? We just ready to test them, and of course the bell rang. <laughs> what do you do then? Well, I was at Woodrow Wilson some 21 years ago, uh, had the benefit of being at the one that involved micro-scale lab techniques. We developed a whole bunch of different techniques, and we were asked to pick the, the lab we thought would benefit the most by it. And I, of course, thought that the hydrogen lab would be good. Now, downscaling that, with the hydrogen with all its wonderful explosive property, you have to be able to you know, put something new in that, uh, that you can't do large scale. So let me show you what that evolved into then. And this is probably <laughs> hydrogen micro rocket lab version 7.2, if you followed all the different progressions. But this is where it seems to have stabilized at. So I've got, here's our zinc. This is a little plastic water bottle. And the cap has had, I'll put it down here so you can see it, um, a little nozzle added to it. I simply drilled a hole in the cap. And the nozzle is the tip here, cut off of a graduated pipette. And as long as you're cutting, you also can cut this portion of it, because that's going to serve as your gas collecting bottle. OK? Um, I decided to have it be, instead of just pure hydrogen, well, we try different hydrogen-oxygen mixtures. So I have an oxygen generator that looks the exact same, except it's got nothing in it at all. This has a little bit of zinc. That's a little zinc metal at the bottom there. And these each have their own little Petri dishes. Before I put them in there, I'm going to put a little bit of water in the Petri dish, about half filled. Again, everything plastic. Except on this one. And that's going to be our water reservoir instead of the whole gas collecting trough. OK, we're like this. So I've taken this pipette. And let me grab this pair of scissors real fast. And you're going to cut off, as I say, this part here gets used for the nozzle. And I cut it right about here. And here is our gas collecting bottle. And I've actually put on there five lines, so I've separated into six increments. And that's the main part of this lab, you'll see. I've also, just this past year, decided to color them orange. These things end up on the floor, and they're hard to see. But when they're colored orange like that, they're much more visible. I did that by soaking them in, a, uh, in an organic uh, dye, um, sedan red, I think it was. But anyway, um, any kind of organic dye would do. So they're stained, essentially. Um, but I'm going to use this one because you can see through it better. Also, what I started doing, I haven't done it with this one, but it's been done with these. These marks were made with a permanent pen. And as the students use these, these tend to rub off pretty quickly. So an extra thing that you might want to do if you're doing this lab is to kind of singe those in there. I take a paper clip and open it up and use a Bunsen burner, heat up just a little bit, and then touch it to those lines, and you get little singed marks, and that then acts as a better uh, permanent increment, OK? So first, let's get the reaction going here. Check this out. Instead of the 3 molar HCl that you might use for the large scale version, we've got just 0.5 molar HCl, very diluted down, OK? And you'll see it still gives a plenty good enough reaction rate. And I'm going to fill this thing all the way to the top. Uh, leave maybe about a centimeter space up there. And that's actually going a little bit faster than maybe I want it to go. That's OK. It's going to go for a good long time. Because I have so much HCl, it's dilute, but it's just small pieces of zinc at the bottom. So it's going to go for maybe 10, 15 minutes at about that clip. And to show you what it's like to fill this completely with water, this is a technique that they have to use over and over again. You squeeze the pipette. Again, you can see how those marks get rubbed off. Stick it in the water. Release it. OK, that draws up about halfway. So it's half filled with water. 
invert it again, mouth up, squeeze it again, and I'm going to, until the wire is just coming out like that, still squeeze it, I turn it upside down, stick it in there, and let go, and now look at that. It's completely full of water, no need for the glass plate and stuff like that. It stays in there because of surface tension. And instead of the whole apparatus, all you do is set this on top here, and that's a good, quick, there. I've got a bulb full of hydrogen gas. And now this is still going strong. I'm going to use it over and over again. Well, what can I do with this? Well, one thing I can do is try to ignite it. Hydrogen's combustible, right? Well, this is an interesting little piece of equipment that I, I used to use to test the coil, but those are expensive and rather dangerous. This is simply a butane lighter, like a charcoal lighter, that has actually run out of butane, but the little sparking mechanism, the piezo crystal in there, still works fine and works indefinitely. Hear that noise? And I suck a piece of speaker wire down in there, put some hot milk glue behind it and a little film canister cap on top, and if the camera can zoom in on this right here on the tip, you'll see a little spark. It'll probably help to have a black background. Is that even showing up? I don't know. But anyway, there is a little spark jumping across there, a tiny spark. You can feel it, by the way, if you go like that. Ooh, that, is, <laughs> that wakes you up. Um, not very much. But I'm going to put this in there now. I've kept it covered. So here's what happens when you spark hydrogen gas. Ready? Put that in there. Isn't that exciting? No, but it's very important for the students to know that pure hydrogen is not combustible. If I give it a little squeeze, though, and let go, and let some air back in, ooh, there was a little pop there and a little condensation on the inside. Still, that doesn't quite get to the excitement, so that's where the oxygen generator comes in. Ready? For the oxygen generator, I'm going to use another reaction that's familiar to most chemistry teachers. I'm going to use hydrogen peroxide. Not the dangerous 30%, not even the 3%. I've diluted this down to 1%. Just took one bottle like this and added two more bottles of water to it, tap water. And by the way, instead of having them out in beakers, I use carboys, so I fill those up. Actually, I use those old laundry detergent, uh, those big, like, I think they're like three gallon laundry detergent, and one's with the HCL and one's with the hydrogen peroxide. But if you have carboys, they work fine. Fill those up, and they're good for the whole day. Um, so this is 1% hydrogen peroxide put in here. It decomposes, of course, to give us water and oxygen gas. And I'm filling this one up all the way as well. The reason I'm filling up all the way is you don't have to wait a long time for that little air space to get flushed out. And this one needs a catalyst, and the catalyst I'm using here is just some yeast in water. I put about a spoonful of yeast in a cup of water and just stir it up, okay? You can use a little bit less yeast if your yeast is pretty fresh, but this stuff isn't, so I add a little bit extra there. Okay, and that now is decomposing, and let's now take the same pipette, fill it up. Again, the technique, squeeze it, put it in there, squeeze again, and now let's see if I can collect some oxygen gas. That's going in a nice clip, too. This is pure, oh, pure oxygen gas. You know what? I filled this up a little bit too full. Let me. When I, put the, I filled it up and I put the yeast in. I should have given myself a little bit more of a headspace there. No big deal. We're good to go on that. Let me refill this too. Okay. So again, the technique, squeeze it, stick it in there, draw it up. Mouth upwards, squeeze it. Stick it in there, draw it up. The yeast tends to form this foam, and the foam does pop, but if you put too much in there, you get some foam in there. It's not a big deal. So now we're collecting oxygen gas. Oxygen is, of course, what's needed for combustion, right? Combustion means to react with oxygen. So what do you suppose this is going to do now, this sample of pure oxygen I've got collected? It's going to be pretty loud, huh? Let's find out. OK. Here we go. I can leave that on there, by the way, as long as I want. All it's doing is flushing out the oxygen with more oxygen. So here we go. Pure oxygen to test that. Huh, just like pure hydrogen. And by the way, if I squeeze this and release like I did with the hydrogen, still nothing. What's the oxygen going to react with itself? See? So pure hydrogen, not a combustible mixture. Pure oxygen, not a combustible mixture. But now the students try different proportions, and that's what these increments are all about. Think of the different ratios they can combine them in. 
one part hydrogen, five parts oxygen, two parts hydrogen, four, three and three, an even mixture, that they predict is going to be the loudest. Four and two, five and one. They've already done six and zero on each side, right? I could draw the water, by the way, from either of these Petri dishes. And notice what's happening as the gas goes in. I'm going to collect, let's say, a I'll leave it on there a little longer. There. I pulled it off and I've got five parts of hydrogen. But what was happening is the hydrogen was going up in there. That water was simply going down, dripping back down to the Petri dish. So there's five parts hydrogen and I like the fact my oxygen is going slowly because at this point I want to pull it off just in time. I can't leave that on the oxygen generator indefinitely because I've got to pull it off right away. If I did, I wouldn't still have that 5 to 1 ratio, right? So now we're going to hear what a 5 hydrogen, 1 oxygen sounds like. Okay. Oh, that's got some force to it. Okay. Nice little snap to it. By the way, when I'm doing this, I'm holding onto the pipe bed. I'm not just holding it loose. I'm holding it you know, pretty securely. And I'm only putting this, the, the wire in about halfway. You put it in all the way, it muffles the noise. So consistently. And they rate that noise on a scale from 1 to 10. Okay? So, I'll cut to the chase here. After they've got all the different mixtures put together, and most of them discover that the loudest mixture is not the 3 to 3, but the four parts hydrogen, two parts oxygen, and we talk about why. I'll cover that on the board after we, we're done with this. Um, here's what we've got then. So here's our mixture. Listen to how loud this is. Okay, that was significantly louder than the previous one. And once they've got all those written down and we pool the class data, it's on the computer, then they are instructed to collect the best mixture again, and instead of holding onto the bulb, they are trying to launch it into a target. And I liked a little kind of skee ball type target with a box inside a box. Those are bonus points we're talking about. Ten bonus points in the middle box, five bonus points for the outside box. It has to stay in, and they have to answer a question correctly once it goes in, so it's not automatic bonus. And the question has to do with the reactions taking place inside here or here. I want them to learn those. So it's not just a freebie. There's, a, there's more to it. I can't tell how many students have gotten it in there, all excited, but they have no clue about, about the answer to the question. Even though I've told them, these are the exact questions I'm going to ask you, and these are their answers, <laughs> they still were too excited about doing the lab to sometimes learn from it. That's not good, but anyway. So let me show you what happens. They'll collect their nice four parts hydrogen two parts oxygen. I could have put a little bit more yeast in there, but it's still going fine. And they go ahead and fire it. And by the way, I've, each group has two of these, so they can, you know, they have a whole assembly line going here with uh, getting them ready. Okay? So here's my first attempted launch at that one. Ready? Now that made a nice noise, but it didn't go that far. Only about halfway. I'm going to go get that again. And I have to tell you this as well, I have it about twice this distance, but we don't have enough room in here, so it's much farther than that. And when it goes that far, the students are all laughing because they realize that's not nearly enough. I said, boy, it's a shame that all that energy got wasted in terms of making noise, acting on our eardrums. Wouldn't it be better if all the energy we could put into, whoop, I'm talking too much there. By the way, if you overshoot it, little technique, easy. Just squeeze out the extra and then transfer it across like that. Wouldn't it be great if instead of acting on our eardrums, it could be a nice quiet rocket and go much farther? The trick is in not collecting a full bulb's worth, but instead stopping when there's still some water left in there. Having water in there to act as a propellant, and now, <laughs> now I'm going too far. So let me try one of my orange rockets and see if I can't land it in that box for you. This is fun. They get as many launches as they want. They just have to recover their rockets. So again, there's the hydrogen. This is what it looks like in the orange. You can still see through it fine. Transfer it over here. I put about three parts hydrogen and maybe about a part and a half of oxygen. Still leaving some in there. I'm not being real careful with this. And 
We might be here all day if I'm really waiting to get into that box, but that's the idea, okay? I'm overshooting it, but uh, um, now, then we talk about the, the chemistry, the stoichiometry, because it's a wonderful lab for stoichiometry. Why was the four to two the loudest? Why is hydrogen, oxygen, a four to two mixture the loudest? So here's how I like to explain that. We have their pool class data, and it's parts hydrogen and parts oxygen. And we have uh, here are the different ones. One, two, we have six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. These are the different mixtures they did. Six parts hydrogen and zero. Nothing. Why? Let's think about what's left over. Okay? Now, I know these are both diatomic, H2 and O2, but we'll leave off the twos just so we can symbolize them with parts. They react in a ratio of 2 to 1, because there's the balanced equation that's going on. And if they react in a 2 to 1 ratio, what's going on in these different combinations? Are we making different things? Is it not following the same equation? No, it's following that equation. It's just we're wasting reactants. We're not getting as much bang for our buck as we could. Because face it, if I have six parts hydrogen, check it out. H, 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 H. Six parts hydrogen, no oxygens. Guess what I'm gonna have left over? I'm all done. Six parts of hydrogen. All wasted, no noise at all. Okay? Now watch this. What if I have five parts of hydrogen and one part oxygen? So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, one oxygen. If they react in a two to one ratio, these are just representing parts here, but it seems like it really works for the students to understand this. I essentially use up two hydrogens for every one oxygen, so I'm gonna go, right? Look what I have left over. Three parts hydrogen. I'll label this as leftover. And we don't wanna have leftover, right? The best, the best mixture is gonna be one that has nothing left over. It all gets used up, it all goes into making noise. How about this one, four to two? One, two, three, four, one, two. They react again at two to one ratio, so cross off two H's for one O, two H's for, oh my gosh, look at that. A four to two mixture has nothing left over. The entire bulb's worth of gas reacts. What about a three to three? Hmm. We haven't had to deal with this before, but watch this. There's one. And then they, they want to say, what's left over? One part hydrogen, two parts oxygen. Of course, that's not the case. We can make a half a batch, can't we? With just one H and a half an O. <laughs> okay? What's left over? 1.5 of the oxygens. So this one is second loudest. In fact, it's very close to this one in terms of being loud, the three to three, okay? The next one, of course, two hydrogen and four oxygen. And this had the exact same amount used up as this did, didn't it? Three parts left over. Here are the oxygens in excess, and these two are very similar in how loud they are the five to one and the two to four because we have three parts left over. It doesn't matter what gas is left over, to make it, it doesn't make a difference in the noise level. And of course the last one, well this one here, one hydrogen and one, two, three, four, five. We got four and a half oxygens left over. And of course this one has all six oxygens. So this shows them how it reaches an optimum mixture right there at the four to two because of it having the least left over. So, and that's really what stoichiometry is all about. It's a recipe. The recipe for making water, two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. If you mix them in the wrong proportions, you don't make something different, you just make less of what you're trying to make and therefore less bang. So, the micro rocket lab's been one of my favorites, one of my students' favorites. 
Um, and it's one that uh, really teaches some good chemistry, some gas chemistry, some reaction chemistry, and of course stoichiometry. Thank you.